Discover your personality. Keep watching. I'm Damon Card, this is Life Mastery Gym, and I teach people just like you cutting edge NLP processes so that you can take charge of your life and create the destiny that you wanna live. So if that sounds good, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can get these videos on a regular basis. What is it you would like to understand better about yourself and about your behavior? By the end of this video, you're gonna learn an important tool that will help you understand yourself better, understand your behavior better, and overall understand your personality better. I've been using processes and techniques like meta programs for years to help myself understand me, to help me understand myself better, but also to help hundreds of clients understand what it is that they do, where does it come from, and what to do about it, how to make changes. And you can't make changes that you're not conscious of. So you have to first become conscious of these things like meta programs, like what I'm about to teach you in order to make those changes. Before I get into this, I would like to know a little bit more about you. What is it that you want to understand better about yourself? So in the comments below, go ahead and let me know. Tell me what that is and I will respond to you. What are NLP meta programs? Meta programs, it's interesting because I've taken different courses and sometimes they'll teach them in practitioner training and sometimes they'll teach them in master practitioner training. I think they're better off in master practitioner because if you really do a solid, good NLP practitioner training, you're already overwhelmed with information. And so meta programs are good to come a little bit later, but that doesn't mean that they're too advanced. A beginner can learn meta programs easily. So what are meta programs? Well, we have programs. We call, That's the P in NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. And we also have what we call meta programs. So that's sort of what is really guiding the program. So I have a program, which oftentimes is like a habit or a compulsion. And so when we go meta to that, we go, okay, well, what is it that I have a propensity to do or a propensity? Where does my attention go? And what propensity do I have for my attention to go there during certain times and during certain situations. And the better you can understand that, the better you can make changes, optimize, maybe take a problem situation and turn it around to actually an ally, something that can help you and, and move you along rather than something that was holding you back. So understanding meta programs is really understanding about the propensity that you have to make certain decisions a certain way or to engage in certain behaviors. Now, what this is very close to, this is very close to any of those personality profiling test. Uh, there's a lot of them out there, and some people uh, use those almost like religion. Um, for, for me, this is about personality, so you want to hold this lightly. You want to hold this gently. You don't want to think of this as something that defines you. And I've done videos on defining your identity. I see this as, I see personality as different than identity. And I could do a whole video on that, but I'll just say really quickly, what is the difference between identity and personality? For me, personality is about something that other people experience about you. You kind of don't have a sense of your own personality other than what people tell you about your personality or maybe what a test can tell you about your personality. And identity has more to do with your self-validating sense of self that comes from within that really doesn't have too much associated with other people. It, sure, you take that information and you use that information to strengthen your sense of self, or you could use it to hurt your sense of self, but it really doesn't, it's, it's more an inside job when it comes to identity and personality and personality type profiling has a lot to do with how other people experience you. What are your um, propensities to do certain things with certain people and in certain locations or contexts? And so... I don't, in other words, what I'm trying to say is don't let any of this stuff define you or limit you in any way. And that goes for any personality profiling test that those are not there to limit you. They're just there to give you some information about, about yourself. And that's, a, I know it's not the best way to explain it, but for now we'll, we'll go with that. So let's jump right into meta programs. So there are many meta programs. I think somebody had found like over 50 of them. And when you look at all 50 and when you see all of them, yeah, you'll get a, an understanding that <laughs> there's, once you understand all of these, you'll have a, a very good illustration of a personality. Um, and that's why I say identity is a little bit deeper. It's more about the person, not the personality. So 
what we're going to do here is only explore three. There's no way I could go through all 50 in a 10 minute video or 10 ish minute uh, video. So, but when you learn these, you'll have a, a greater understanding of whatever context that you pick out, why you do what you do there and how probably other people are experiencing you. So you want to do, before you start diving into meta programs, you want to choose a context to work with because your meta programs will be different from context to context. The one thing that I don't want you to do, and this is why I'm saying don't let these kind of tests uh, profile you and and limit you in any way, is that exactly that you you will be your meta programs will be different from context to context. So trying to look for our meta programs that say who you are in every context all the time, that would be very limiting. It'd be very limiting to think about it that way, and it wouldn't be very useful for you. Meta pro programs are there for to for you to make good use of. So first, contextualize. Where do you want to explore your meta programs in? It could be a work context, it could be an uh, intimate relationship, it could be social circle, wherever it is, but choose a context. So the one we're going to be exploring, the three that we're going to be exploring here, the first one is toward or away from. So what is this? Do you have a tendency to, in your mind and in your behavior, move in the direction of what it is that you want or move away from what it is that you don't want? Now think about that because what most people want to, the right answer sounds like, well, I want to move toward what I want, but that's not how most people think actually. That's not how most people uh, go about things. And I know this because I've coached a lot of people. And usually the first thing that I have to work with somebody on is getting them to say in the positive what it is that they want, because I'll ask them, what do they want? And they think they told me what they want, but what they just told me is exactly what they don't want. Well, I don't want this to happen, or I don't want to do that, or I don't want to be too afraid to succeed. Or, you know, so it, you think about that. When you think about what it is that you want, does your mind naturally gravitate to what you don't want or what you do want? Now remember, contextualize this. It, if you think about it in life in general, you'll say, well, there's that one time where I did it this way and there's a one time that I did it that way. It's just too general, too broad. So choose a context at work or your professional life. Do you have a tendency to move toward what you want or think more about mo what you want or more about what you don't want or more about what you're trying to get away from? Same thing in your relationship, like an intimate relationship. Same thing in school, social circles. Make sure you give it some context. It'll be much easier to elicit this when you do it that way, when you have a context. Now, this is also a spectrum. It's not an either or sort of thing because most of the time, most people do, a vary, do varying degrees of this. So some people might say, oh yeah, you know, I'm most of the time, I'm thinking about what, it, I'm trying to move away from what it is that I don't want. But every once in a while, I do, Go about it this way. So, okay, you could draw a line instead of it just circle and say, oh, I'm on, I'm on away from. There might be varying degrees and more than likely there is. And so some of you might have said, well, I do both. I, I think of them both. Okay. And you can go in the middle here. And then there will be people, usually your very, very positive people are always going toward. Now, in a meta program, we, we tend to shy away from saying, well, what is better or what is right or what is wrong? But I can tell you in most cases, focusing on what it is you do want will serve you much, much better because this puts it into your unconscious. You can see here what it is you want. It's compelling. Then you want to move toward it. If you're focused on what it is you don't want and you're very clear about that and you know it very, very well, your unconscious doesn't know the difference between something you want to move toward or want to move away from. What it does want to move toward naturally is clarity and it moves away from confusion and it moves away from the unknown. So if you don't know what you want or you're not very clear about what it is that you want, but you're very clear about what it is you don't want, you're gonna naturally gravitate here. Having an away from meta program is exactly that. It's you're focused on what it is you don't want. And that even for some people, they have a hard time understanding that. And they're like, well, no, that's what I don't want. I say, yes, I know it's what you don't want, but not wanting it is putting your focus on it, okay? So it's not putting your focus here and getting clear about this. Um, it's probably a good idea to know both. It's probably a good idea to know what you don't want so that if it, if you see it coming up on, on your path, your journey, you go, oh, I need to avoid that. 
but you don't want to you don't want to focus on it. You don't want to think about it a lot. What you want to be thinking more about is this. But it's good to know both. All right. So let's go to the next one. This is the one that I use a lot. Process or options. Now I have a specific strategy that I use with this and a lot, it's actually something that's quite common that a lot of people will use, but I'll go into that in a moment. So process is really about step one, step two, step three, a procedure. Sometimes people call this procedure or options. Some people call it process or options. So process is when you have a very clear, mo most of the time linear, but not always linear, process. It's there, there isn't really many variations. It's step one, steps one through 10, or it's the manual and the Ikea furniture that you get. Do you follow it or do you try to find other ways of going about doing it? Okay. So this can drive me nuts a lot of times with people because when there is something I don't already know a lot about, I am all about process. I'm all about procedure. I am, Hey, tell me what I have to do and I will follow the exact process or procedure because I have no other experience. I have no other reference to follow other than something that's given to me uh, that's supposed to help me get to my goal, whatever it is that I want. Options people, they like to try a different bunch of different ways. They like to try all these different things and, and your creative types are probably gonna be more options oriented. Your mathematical types, are, even though I don't like math, are gonna probably be more like this. Now, but I have a certain strategy. I'm not always process. I'm sometimes options as well. And you might, this might be very familiar to you. So if I'm in the complete unknown, I'm new to something, I'm learning it for the first time. I'll give you an example. I'm learning another language. And I, and I thought to myself, okay, I'm not going to just go buy a, one of those online trainings. I know there's more to it than that. So what I need is a process. I need to go find somebody who's a polyglot who speaks many languages. And I want to understand what is his or her procedure. And so I found it too. So it's something unfamiliar to me. So I'm going to go process. Now, some people might want to start with the options. And I know plenty of people who do. I had a former business partner who was just like that. Always wanted to go options. And I'm like, dude, right now, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. So you need to give me process. I need, I don't need options right now. Options are too confusing. There's too much chaos. Give me process. So uh, the options person, like I said, is going to want to try many different things. Now, when do I come to options? And this is happens in most areas. So once I've got the process down and I know the process, process backwards and forwards, I can do it in my sleep. That's when I start wanting to try out options because now I know what I need to know. I have a reference. It's solid. It's in me. So, um, for example, like yoga or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, whatever it is, some of the things that I do, uh, first year of classes, <laughs> I'm like, give me a process. After I've got some experience, I know what I'm doing. I've got some competence. I want to know what the options are. Uh, and one of the reasons why is I don't want to get bored. <laughs> so what kind of learner are you? Or what, when you're in a new situation, what do you start with? Do you start with the options or do you start with, hey, I need a process. Now, like I said, it can vary. At work, you might want all process. In your social circle, you might want all options. What would be an example of process in a social circle? Well, certain social circles have their ways of interacting and their ways of being and their what they accept and what they don't accept. They have their own boundaries. That would be about the process. That would be about, okay, what, is, what are the, the unspoken rules of me being a part of the social circle? That would be your process or your procedure. Your options would be, well, hey, what can I do with these people? Or what, you know, what can we do together? Like, how can we bond better? How can we connect better? How can we have more fun together? That's going to be the options. So you might not be all either one of these. You might be more like me in any, any situation. I'm going to start here and I'm probably going to end up here. And unless it doesn't interest me, then I might just drop it. So which one are you? Are you process or are you options? And the third and final one I'm going to go over is internal versus external. Now this one is really, really broad. So you kind of have to get a little bit more detail about what is it that you're talking about. But in general, internal versus external is 
where do you seek your information for especially making a decision? Um, decisions are really what gets any action going. You have to make a decision to act. So where do you go for that information? Where do you where do you go for validation? So do you rely on your own internal thought? Like you think about those deep thinkers, people who say, um, you know, you ask them a question or you, they're going to have to make a decision. They say, well, let me get back to you on that. And they have to go somewhere and do some deep thinking. They're not going out asking for advice. They go to their cave, <laughs> wherever that is, and they think this through and then they come back. And maybe they do want a little bit of feedback because they're not 100% this. But your internals are going to do that. You're going to go off to somewhere else and they're going to think this through. They might write stuff. They might uh, do other activities, but they're not really looking for this. They're not looking for other people's input. And maybe they're not really even testing anything that wouldn't be the, the feedback that could be from something other than a person. So they're not experimenting, in other words. Of course, like anything else, there are positives and negatives to either side. But before you jump into that, Find out what you are. So again, use different contexts, your social life, your uh, your work life. You know, most of the time my work life and almost everything that I did until I started really doing what I want to do, like I do now, I was very internal. Why? Because I didn't like the work and I never thought of it as something I would do for life, like bartending. I was just like, I, I know I'm passing through. So I didn't engage very much with other people and I didn't, I didn't care to. And I was, so I was all internal. My decisions were all internal. I didn't ask for help. I knew my job, I just kind of did it. And then in my social circles, of course, I'm more external. And that's not so for everybody. Some people are very comfortable in a social social circle, but they're quiet and they don't they don't really reach out for their, for the external. But for me, I'm going to be I'm going to be more external. I'm that to me is what socializing is all about. I'm putting myself out there. But I'm also an introvert, so I do a lot of this too. So it all depends on the situation. Socially, I'm going to be here. Um a lot of times when it comes to work, I'm going to be here. Less so now because I, I do more of what I want to do now. And then so this can still, this can change a lot. So there's also inside validation and, and outside validation. And that kind of goes back to what I was saying before about personality. If you're really cautious about your personality and wanting to hone it and for it to be just perfect, meaning you want the perfect personality for other people because you want their validation, that can create problems. And that, like I said, this is, goes back to what I was saying at the beginning of the video. <clears throat> Don't let this stuff define you or limit you. This is far more important when it comes to validation because you got to take you wherever you go. So you want to feel good about you. You want to feel good about yourself, regardless if other people don't like you. Now, if everybody doesn't like you, which is usually not true, but if you're getting lots of feedback of really bad behavior, that's driving people away. Well, yeah, you of course want to listen to that information and make adjustments, but always you got to feel good about yourself in the end. So this is where I would say this is more like identity and that's more like personality. But again, I'm, I'm, I'm giving that some context. Internal, external can be different in any situation. If you're, like I said, if you're at work and you need to talk to the other people, other supervisors to get their opinions, that, that might be something you just really have to do instead of trying to be a lone wolf and and making all these decisions. So a team might require that you're more this than you are this. And maybe you are working in a team and you're more this rather than that. And maybe that's causing a problem. That's why it's important to elicit these, understand them, and then ask yourself, okay, do I need to make some changes? That doesn't mean you have to go the, to the other side of the extreme either. That might just mean you, you need a little more balance here. So you come to the middle and do a little, little both of these. I, I divide my attention between these two because it really serves me in this particular situation. And then sometimes you do find it's, I would be much better on the other side of the spectrum for this particular context. So again, this is all about understanding yourself better, understanding your behavior, your patterns, so that you can make adjustments and changes that will really serve you, that will set you up for success, that will maybe uh, connect you better with people so that they you become more influential because they enjoy you more. So these meta programs have endless possibilities. So when it comes to learning these, I would make sure you do them like three at a time. That's why I gave you three. It's not too scary. It's uh, you can handle that, you know, in, in increments of three much better than trying to tackle everything all at once. So 
and, and, and really learn these, like really understand them. Don't just read over them and memorize them, actually apply them. Okay, well, let me see what happens if I, you know, look into this in this particular situation and, and elicit your meta program. You'll understand it, a meta program so much better when you do that. And if you want to take it even further, uh, eliciting a meta program or not just one, but multiple meta programs from other people will give you a much better understanding of other people and why they do what they do and why they make the decisions that they make, which is all great information if you want to be more persuasive and more influential. Now you have a much better understanding of what meta programs are and you've got the understanding of at least three of them here. If you would like to know about more meta programs, if you would like to know what I think are probably the most important meta, meta programs, because I definitely don't use all 50 something of them. I only use a few at a time. If you'd like to know more about what I think are important meta programs that you want to be incorporating in your practice, whatever that is, self-improvement practice, or you're a coach and you have an actual coaching practice, you will want this free PDF. It's a PDF of the meta programs that I think are the most important. There's more than three of them. <laughs> so check out that PDF. You can get it. You can get instant access to it. If you go to the description right here, you'll see that the link is in there. Or if you look at the comment, the one at the top one that's pinned right there, there is a link there. You just click that link and you get access to that free PDF. In the comments below as well, while you're down there getting your free PDF, on meta programs, let me know uh, which one of these you are in, in different situations. Post that in the comments right down below. And if you haven't already, make sure that you have clicked that subscribe button or you're already subscribed and click that bell so you'll be notified when I put new videos out. If you can think of a friend or a family member who you think would like this video, make sure you share it with them. Take care.